Metroid Fusion, a game that cannot be repeated nor replicated by its own franchise. To me, Metroid Fusion is more than just another entry in the Metroid series. It is a game that managed to capture the essence of isolation and fear in one tiny cartridge on a small handheld, no less. While I will always revisit heavy hitters like Super Metroid, Prime, and Dread, Fusion provided an experience that stuck with me forever. So what exactly did Fusion do in order for me to shower this game with such praise? For those who are new to Metroid or Metroidvanias in general, these games will have you running around in a massive world, exploring your surroundings while some areas will be blocked off until you gain a certain power-up or a key item that will grant you access and expand on what you're allowed to cover. The Metroid series in particular will have you playing as Samus, who is a bounty hunter, and most of her missions will involve her going into hostile environments and eradicating all kinds of threats that is an absolute danger to the entire universe. And when she visits these places, she is alone 100% of the time. No backup, no towns, no civilians, or other troopers roaming about. It is just her and her iconic power suit that never failed her in any way. When Fusion came into play, however, the game had a bit of a mixed reception. While many praise it for being an overall great game in the Metroid lineup and a standalone gaming experience, fans of the series had often criticized the game for being too linear. You see, in previous entries, especially in the case of Super Metroid and Zero Mission, which did come out after Fusion I should mention, these titles are hands off in regards of player progression. At most, they will tell you where you need to go and give you some kind of clue, but but how you get there is entirely up to the player. When playing these games for the first time, you may feel inclined to try and do everything in a certain order, unlocking power-ups and abilities while progressing through the main game as it was intended. But the moment you find out certain exploits like the infinite wall or bomb jumping, you can reach certain areas in the game that was not intended for you to arrive until later on, letting you get all kinds of upgrades and power-ups way sooner than you should have. This is known as sequence breaking, which is commonly found in games like these. Well, Fusion took all of that and tossed it out of the window. Samus cannot perform either of these infinite techniques I brought up earlier, making it impossible to sequence break this game. And if you had any funny ideas, the game will wall you off from wandering anywhere you were not supposed to be until later. I'm aware that everything I said just now may seem like it's a bad thing, especially since as of the making of this video, open exploration seems to be all the craze right now. But I can assure you that all of this was done for a good reason. Unlike the other side-scrolling Metroid games prior to this one and a couple after, Fusion is actively trying to tell you a story while you are experiencing everything firsthand. And it does a fantastic job at doing this by having your environment change and mold itself based on your current situation and the events that are taking place as you play. In order to accomplish this, the game is required to remove the ability to sequence break, otherwise it would have fallen apart and a lot of the areas you'd end up exploring wouldn't make a lot of sense. When Fusion begins, you are given a brief explanation on what is going on and how Samus gained her newfound appearance. During a mission on a planet SR 388, Samus encounters a parasite that infected her suit and almost took out her life in the process. In fact, the suit infection was so bad they had to surgically remove it off of her since the suit's organic systems is well ingrained on Samus herself. This parasite is known as the X, and these nasty beings infect their prey, rapidly multiply from within, absorb their knowledge, memories, and DNA of their newfound host, then mimic their form while their actual host dies as a result of all this. They will continue to repeat the cycle until there is nothing left, making them a truly destructive enemy of the entire universe. It should be noted that the X parasites cannot infect machines or any synthetic beings, however there are exceptions to this rule if what they are infecting happens to have biomechanical features on them. Keep that tucked away in the back of your mind for now. Before Samus was taken out for good due to the infection, she was saved thanks to a vaccine that came in clutch at the last second. This vaccine was produced by the very things she hunted down, Metroids. These Metroids are a natural predator to the X, so the moment the vaccine was injected, the parasites were no more. From here on out, however, Samus now has Metroid DNA and gained a new suit out of the deal, appropriately named the Fusion Suit. This Metroid-based suit is also why it appears to be more organic looking instead of having that armored appearance she's had until now. Unfortunately, this means she cannot use her old suit anymore. Yes, this can all be summed up as another reason for 
Samus to lose all of her abilities from a previous mission and has to start all over again. But this time they gave it a very solid reason for that happening, far better than just getting shipwrecked at the start of every adventure. Bear in mind, Samus had that iconic power suit since forever and it's been with her for most of her adventures until now. So losing that suit is the equivalent of Ash saying goodbye to Pikachu and letting it roam free with the rest of its kind. But Samus has no time to get sentimental as she is thrown right into another mission, a price to pay for being the best hunter in the galaxy. She's sent to a large space colony known as the Biological Space Laboratories, or BSL for short, where her infected suit was taken for investigation. A large explosion happened and Samus was called over there to see what all the fuss was about, and it's right at this moment the game's story really begins to unfold. When Samus inspects the area where the explosion happened, she finds the place in shambles and so far no survivors. She did however find a small horn out there just minding its own business. Surely this couldn't be the reason why the explosion happened, right? But upon taking it out, it spawns an X-Parasite just like what happened on SR388. However, instead of Samus getting infected again, it got absorbed by her suit. Finding a lone X-Parasite didn't seem like much to the player, but little did we know, it is a disaster that is already unfolding. The X-Parasite chilling there the whole time tells both Samus and the computer that the X-Parasites have began their infestation within the BSL. Not only the researchers are as good as gone, but they can also infect the living creatures that are held here for preservation, and we're talking about from small ones to dangerous life forms. So now, Samus needs to eradicate the X as quickly as possible before they spread to other sectors and possibly the rest of the universe if they manage to get out. Now as you are playing Fusion, Samus will be visiting each sector with the intent to stop the X from spreading any further. As she goes along, she will encounter a lot of familiar enemies she's dealt with in the past, except these enemies are being mimicked by the X, which means these original life forms had already bit the dust before you had a chance to encounter them. This is especially evident when you come across the zombie researchers, as they were once human before the X made quick work of them. With this game being on the Game Boy Advance, you would think that having limited buttons would be a bit troublesome, especially if you're used to having full buttons. Thankfully, Samus's control scheme is simplified enough for it to work wonderfully on this little handheld. She can turn on a dime and has decent running speed, so basic movement isn't a slog when you're exploring the station. Her somersault jump is still intact as you would expect, a tad bit faster than how it felt in Super Metroid, and as I mentioned earlier, she can wall kick in order to reach higher places as needed. Her arm cannon is her main go-to when dispatching enemies, and she is capable of aiming in 8 directions. Plus, if you ever need to keep it locked for a a certain period of time, the L triggers got you covered. She can also keep it locked while moving too, and that really comes in handy. Her initial arsenal is going to be very limited at first, but as you unlock her other abilities by defeating certain X parasites and absorbing them, much like a certain hero we all know, or visiting the data stations when applicable, her overall abilities will expand over time, granting her access to areas she couldn't before while increasing her offensive capabilities at the same time. Her restored powers can also help her find hidden upgrades that can permanently increase her health, missiles, and power bombs. And believe me, she is going to need all the upgrades she can get, especially since her new suit has as much durability as a wet tissue. Getting new abilities isn't the only thing you need in order to gain access to other areas. Throughout the game, you will be tasked with opening locks to other sectors in the station, but doing so will cause the X to invade the moment they are given access. This is experienced during your first time in the Pyro Sector. The place is completely completely desolate of enemies or survivors for that matter, but the moment you open the security lock as instructed by the computer, the X will immediately roam the place and that is when the enemies will spawn everywhere. Scenarios like these are the main reasons why the game had to go the more linear route, because there are other narrative events that do take place. There are 6 sectors in total and at some point you will be required to backtrack to each one at least twice, but you'll almost never take the same route in each of them. Plus, the X will evolve and adapt new ways to take Samus out. I remember a moment where the X became aware that Samus is susceptible to extremely low temperatures thanks to the Metroid vaccine. So until you recovered your various suit, the X parasites with ice properties will actively chase you down until you leave their presence. The X will even take it a step further and steal your upgrades from the data rooms while destroying them at the same time just to halt Samus's recovery. But once you've rightfully regained your various suit, not only you'll be able to 
absorb those ice parasites, they will now run away the moment you've entered their presence because they quickly learn that they cannot exploit that weakness anymore. Yo, what's good? You were all about that smoke earlier. But the fact that the X is constantly adapting to your every move is what makes them so terrifying. And it's part of the reason why this game has a horror element tied to it. See, one aspect that all of the Metroid games have in common is that Samus is always in a state of isolation. When I say it's just you and your suit, I really do mean that in every sense of the word. Fusion's isolation hits differently, however, because you're inside of a space station with hardly any survivors, save for a few creatures that she's met in her previous adventures, and on top of that, she is dealing with the same parasite that almost removed her existence. The game sells this element even further with its clever sound direction, playing certain environmental noises and music when you would at least expect it to happen. One minute you could be wandering around and hearing the usual sector theme until you've entered a certain point in the area, then all of a sudden the music plays an eerie tune out of nowhere. Even if you were to backtrack out of that area, that same haunting tune will continue to play. It's even more impactful when certain things happen, like traveling up the elevator shaft only to have the power cut off completely and you're left with another haunting piece. These simple yet effective methods of sound manipulation is enough to drive tension and make you wary of what's lurking around every corner. This also applies to its ability to build up certain bosses all throughout Samus's mission to purge the X parasites. My personal favorite when it comes to these will always be the nightmare, simply because I appreciate the buildup leading up to this boss encounter, followed by the fight itself. The nightmare will first show up in Sector 5. When you visit this sector, nothing seems out of the ordinary as aside from the X parasites moving about. Also, thanks to our various suit, we can survive the harsh cold environment and get our ice missiles. As we are leaving, however, you'll notice a large shadow roaming in the background and making strange noises. Whatever it is must be really strong when you consider the fact that every time it flies past, the screen noticeably shakes. This shadowy creature will continue to do this for a while too, even when you revisit the area a few times. Well, at some point after you recovered your plasma beam, the computer tells you that a biological weapon known as the Nightmare is rampaging all over Sector 5 and you need to take it out. When you return to Sector 5, however, you'll find that the place looks like a war zone and gain a clear picture on just how destructive this weapon really is. The damage is so monumental, Sector 5 can't even maintain its freezing temperatures anymore and it permanently loses its cold environment for the rest of the game. Following the Nightmare's destructive trail, you'll eventually get to a boss room where you're faced with a hulking floating metal beast complete with a disturbing mask and the fight ensues. Now first off, Nightmare's theme is the only boss music in the whole game that gives off a bone chilling vibe unlike everyone else. All of the bosses in the game is provided with high octane music that really gets the blood pumping. But Nightmare, on the other hand, is provided with this somber yet distorted track with the sole purpose of throwing you off your game, matching the unsettling nature of this fight. Mm -hmm. 
Nightmare is also considered to be the hardest fight in the game, sitting right up there with Neo Ridley. Not only you need to avoid its barrage of lasers, you also need to deal with its gravity manipulation once it enters its second phase. Samus will not only become much slower, but her missiles, which has been a reliable source of high damage output, won't be nearly as effective since they'll get dragged down by the increased gravity. Also, Nightmare gains a subtle visual appearance during all of this. After it sustains enough damage, the eye sockets on its mask will get blown off, and you'll see green liquid oozing out of them, giving off the illusion that the boss itself is shedding tears the longer the fight goes on. But what I didn't know at the time was that this was something else entirely. When you eventually destroy its generator, the mask will get blown off completely and you'll witness a true face of nightmares behind it. Or rather, what's left of it anyway, as the Nightmare's actual face has been melting this entire time. At this point, you now have to put this weapon out of its misery and blast its face with missiles while it is trying to bombard you with lasers, followed by charging towards you as often as it can with its face growing more hideous the more damage it sustains. I will tell you, younger me struggled with this fight for a good while. Nowadays, I don't have nearly as much issues as I did before, but even now, I can say it's still one hell of a solid fight and it truly lives up to its name. Even with everything that I described, all of these elements are not the only things that makes Fusion into such a memorable impact that it's known for. Think about it for a moment. Samus may be dealing with a horrifying parasite that could definitely bring the universe to ruin, but thanks to her new suit, she's already become more of a threat to the X just by merely existing. Furthermore, we see in this video that despite the X's efforts, Samus was still able to outsmart them and grow stronger with every passing minute. Still, something feels off. What exactly was it that caused that explosion in the beginning in the first place? And what was it that helped the X infect most of the station to begin with? Was there a double agent? An inside job? What could be the most threatening thing the X can throw at you besides a mutated clone of Ridley? This is the core reason why Metroid Fusion was able to gain its reputation as a sci-fi horror as it truly embraces all of the reasons why the X parasites are terrifying. When your suit was taken to the BSL, the X at some point was able to take all of the knowledge it gained from Samus and mimicked her at full power, letting it roam free with all of Samus's abilities from the jump. To make matters worse, the SAX has access to Samus's ice beam, allowing this monster to freeze Samus on the spot if she doesn't have her suit upgraded, then follow up with a super missile, a tactic Samus used to actually defeat the Metroids in her previous missions. So we're talking about an enemy who nearly killed you, hijacked your suit, mimics you at full power, and has a high level of intelligence. No wonder this has become one of the most notorious villains in the Metroid franchise. Now that last bit about the SAX's intelligence is somewhat hard to believe because the moment the SAX sees you, it will be behave like a mindless berserker, at least until you're able to get out of sight and out of mind, then it will immediately lose interest and walk away. But there are several moments that can support just how smart the SAX really is. Since the SAX is constantly hunting you, it will actively blow off passageways to cut you off and keep you well isolated so you can't get away. It will also destroy previous data rooms you've visited before so you can't use them anymore. The SAX is also the reason behind the very first power outage earlier in the game, as well as the initial explosion on the BSL. The computer even stated that it used a power bomb to escape its holding, and it has been assisting the X with their infestation. In fact, if you were to go back to the room where you first discovered the X's existence on the station, you can see all of the destruction the SAX caused in the exact moment, as well as the capsule where the SAX was kept. I really love the attention to detail that was put into this game. 
Hell, you even get a very close encounter with the SAX without even realizing it. Right after you enter a passageway that leads you to your bomb upgrades and acquire them, you will hear a loud explosion followed by the sounds of metallic footsteps fading away as the SAX leaves the room, signifying that it was here and closed off your exit. This is very easy to miss since you're very likely going to be dealing with this annoying enemy when it happens, but I bet when you replay this game, you're definitely going to be paying attention. But wait a minute, most of Samus' suit is mechanical, so how can the X infect it? Well, this is because Samus' suit does contain some measure of organic functions for Samus to adapt to it and use it like it's an extra thick layer of armored skin. Thanks to this combined with the knowledge they absorbed from Samus herself, the X had no problems putting this suit to work. It is the same reason why it was able to infect a powerful security robot you'll encounter later on, mainly because of the Nero systems it uses. Or to put it in a more simpler way, the robot is using a living brain. Anyway, the SAX is a constant threat to Samus all throughout the whole game, and if you happen to encounter it, your only option is to run like hell. You can't hurt it at all, and while you'll gain the ability to freeze it later, it won't hold it still for too long. Worst part about it is, at least during your first playthrough anyway, you won't have any idea when this SAX is going to show up. But when it does... The theme, the metallic footsteps echoing in the area when they hit the ground as it paces, it is all the game needs in order to portray just how menacing this monster is. There are even moments in the game where you are cornered and you have no idea how you're supposed to progress. It knows you're trapped and it's only a matter of time before you act out of impatience and reveal yourself so it can hunt you down. The SAX is truly one of the most terrifying villains I have ever experienced in a game, let alone on a tiny handheld that is a GBA. In fact, it is so iconic, this SAX is what inspired the EMMI in Metroid Dread, who is honestly more ruthless since escaping that one is far more difficult than the SAX, so you can definitely say the EMMI took what SAX did and improved on what this hunter could actually do. Metroid Fusion, to this day, is still my top favorite Metroid game, sharing a spot right up there with Metroid Dread. Veteran Metroid players will likely give it flack for its linearity, but that is also the main reason why I still recommend this game to people who've never touched a Metroid game, let alone a Metroidvania, period. Even with this game being a tad railroady on where it wants you to go, the game will still put you to work in order to figure out how to get there, as the path leading up to your next destination is not quite as clear as the game makes it out to be. So if you ever get stuck, I encourage you to drop as many bombs as you can or try shooting at walls or even the floor. Fusion also opens up once Samus recovers her screw attack as destroying certain walls will reveal that every sector is interconnected with each other, letting you backtrack and find every upgrade to your heart's content. So once again, if you've never played a Metroidvania game at all and want to stick your feet into a game that won't overload you with too many mechanics and provide you with enough bite so it's not a cakewalk, Fusion is the way to go. I'm also going to plug in 9 Years of Shadow in that category too since it fulfills the same purpose without the horror element, and also because I know not everyone has the Nintendo stuff to play Metroid Fusion in the first place. I did a video covering this game already, so if you want more detail on this magnificent gem, I suggest checking it out. The link will be in the description. Anyway, that's all I have for today, but before I go, I just want to say real quick that as of the making of this video, the channel has 
finally hit its 500 goal. And I fully intend to keep climbing from here. I'm still cooking ideas on how we can celebrate this joyous milestone, so stay tuned until then. I just want to say to all those who have already subscribed and to any of the new ones who subbed recently, remember that all of you are magnificent gems in my book and I appreciate every last one of you. But until then, be sure to hit me with that Siggity sub, like it if you dig it, and I hope to see y'all in the next one. Later!